Gates, and I'm a member of the Pink team here at Yahoo. And I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about some things we've added in the last couple of releases of Pig, and give you a little flavor of the things we're working on uh, right now, to add in future releases. So, um, in the last year, we've put out uh, three or four releases of Pig. I'm just going to talk about what's in Pig 6 and Pig set, uh, 7 here. So, let me start with an example. So a very common thing to want to do in any of this kind of web processing is what we call clickstream analysis or session analysis. All right, so this is an example of that. You might have a feed that records all the clicks that you uh, get on the website and you want to know for each user what they do in their session. So the first thing you're going to do is group this by user. Then usually you would order it by timestamp and then feed it to some special sessionized UDF, some code that you've written that will analyze the sessions, right? So, this, like I said, a very common thing to want to do. The problem is you can't use Hadoop's combiner for this. This is not a combinable query, which is kind of a bummer because that means that you're, um, you know, the amount of data you need to hold in memory, if you have to hold the whole user lit, or everything a user did all at once, that's a lot harder. If you, um, it's also much slower. So Pig does offer a way to use the um, Hadoop combiner called the algebraic interface that you can implement in your UDF, but again, that won't work here. So one thing we added in 06 was another interface for UDFs called the accumulator interface. And that's for UDFs like this where you don't need to see all the data all at once, but you, again, can't use a combiner. So in this interface, Pig will hand your UDF tuples in a collection you know, maybe a thousand at a time, and at the end, um, get back the value. So this is just a way to deal with large data sets without um, without needing to collect them all in memory at once. What else did we add in 06? Uh, we added a way for UDF to communicate between the front and back end. We had a lot of users complain that we invoked UDFs on the front end to find out about the schema and about um, that kind of stuff, and then we invoke them on the back end to run, but they, there was no way for them to pass information in between, so we resolved that. We also gave them access to all the Hadoop job comp information through that. And we, um, if you used Pig prior to 06, you probably noticed that we get GC overhead problems a fair amount of time, get out of, um, out of heap errors a lot. Uh, we also did quite a lot of work to resolve that. I won't say we drove it to zero, but we got it quite a bit much lower than it was. All right, so that's the whirlwind tour of 06. Now for whirlwind of what we put in 07. Um, in the past, so when pig loads data, it presents what's called, you give it a load function. I mean, we of course have built-in ones, but if you wanna, if you have data that isn't just standard, you know, tab delimited or whatever, um, you can write your own load function. Okay have an interface for that. And in 06 and before, if you want to write a load function that just works on files and uses standard splits, by which I mean the input splits that you get from like say file input format or text input format, um, that, that worked pretty well. If you wanted to write a load function that needed to use a different input format or didn't use standard splits or something like that, that didn't work very well at all. That was kind of hard in the older case stuff. If you wanted to write a store function that worked on something other than files, like say you wanted to store stuff to HBase, that was really hard, like to the point of almost being impossible. One or two people actually did accomplish it, but it was really nasty hard. Um, so in 0.7, we rewrote our load func and store func interfaces to be very closely aligned with Hadoop's input and output formats. So now we view a load function as just the piece on top of the input format that takes the key and value pair that the input format returns for you from its record reader and just parses that into you know, fields for pig to uh, handle. And the same with the store function. We re rewrote it to work on sit on top of output format and its job is just to take a pig record and turn that into a key value pair that can then be stored by that output format. So that means if you have data that you are um, already reading 
that ha you've already written an input format for because you probably do some MapReduce jobs on it. Uh, writing a pig loader function now becomes almost trivial, right? All you have to do is take that input format, put this over the top of it. Um, the downside of this is it's not backward compatible. We really changed those interfaces. So if you wrote custom load functions and you switch from six to seven, they will have to be rewritten. There isn't a, a compatibility story there. What else did we add to 07? Um, a complaint we got a lot was that um, Pig has this local mode that we would pe we told people to use for debugging. And it works fairly nice. It runs locally on your box. You can attach to it with the debugger, you know, in Eclipse or whatever your favorite debugger is and all that. But it had one serious downside, which was it wasn't actually running in a MapReduce framework. So you weren't running in the same environment you were going to work in. Um, so you could catch some bugs, you know, if you're if your UDF just had a null pointer exception in it or something, you could catch that. But a lot of other bugs you'd miss. So we changed, um, we got rid of pig's local mode that just executed stuff inside its own, uh, inside pig, and switched to use Hadoop's local job runner. So this still has all the niceness that it's all in one process, you can attach your debugger to it, all that, but now you're truly running in a MapReduce setup on your local box when you test. So um, this improves testing and debuggability and that kind of stuff quite a bit. Um, we also changed it to make quite a bit more use of distributed cache for, um, for some things where we weren't using it before, which sped things up and also makes life much easier on the main node. All right, what are we working on now? Uh, several things. One, we are adding um, runtime statistics so that as you run a pig, or when you run a pig script, we'll record uh, quite a few things about what happens in that script, including features you use, like types of join or those kind of things. Um, right now, in pig, depending on how you run a query, the Hadoop counters aren't always meaningful. If you look at, like, for example, number of records, uh, because of the way pig uh, does things, those numbers won't always realistically reflect the number of records that you stored. Uh, so in this case, we will have uh, pig counters for that so that you can see truly, okay, in this store, I actually stored this many records. Um, and that will be stored both in pig's log files and in the job history files so that if you want to produce over time, you want to keep track of what you're doing with your pig scripts, you can then write pig Latin scripts to go read the job history files and see what what you've been doing with pig over the last months or whatever. Um, we want to add the ability to write UDFs and things in languages other than Java. We get a lot of feedback that, you know, Java is a bit heavyweight for writing a UDF, and I'd love to be able to whip one out in Python or Ruby or something. So we're going to add that. We're going to start with Python. But basically, the way we're writing it, anything that can compile down to Java bytecode would work. So um, you could do it in Ruby, you could do it in uh, or be what, you know, whatever you would be willing to add the support for. Um, we want to add the ability to set custom partitioners in certain cases. Some cases we won't support that because some cases pig actually sets the partitioner and in that case we won't let the user mess with it, but in other cases we want to. Um, we need to make pig available in Maven. And then um, we're doing a lot of work around usability um, both for developers and users. And part of that is um, there's a whole initiative inside <coughs> Hadoop that uh, Sanjay here from Yahoo uh, posted a blog post today about on um, marking all our interfaces for what's the intended audience? Is this for everybody? Is this only for certain groups? Or is this in private to the, um, to the project? And also stability. Is this you know, are we promising this will be backward compatible? Are we warning you up front, no, this isn't, we're gonna, you know, this may change release to release. So we're working through uh, labeling all that in our code so that both pig developers and uh, other users can, can know, you know, what, what is safe to use in pig at the level there. You know, if they want it stable, is it gonna be stable? If they're willing to live with evolving, it'll be like that. Um, that's it. That's my 12 of my 15 minutes, I think. And I want to. Um, yeah, I want to leave time for questions. Yes. 
you have any tools to share in terms of converting a .6 to .7 script or whatnot? I'm sure you, you guys Well, can okay, so do we have tools to share in converting .6 to .7? So the scripts, Pig Latin itself did not change. So if, if you don't use a custom loader, it's 100% <coughs> compatible. Just to be clear, so your pig, there's no need to convert any pig Latin. The only thing is if you wrote a custom load function, and we do have tips on that. I'm not sure we've published them yet, but that's a good, a good point. I'll try to make sure those get out on the pig wiki. That would be great. We have a lot of pig six users that would probably like to do pig seven, but need some advice on how to do that. Yeah, I know we have it. I just I can't remember whether we published it. And I'll make sure we have. Thank you. On there? Okay, Dimitri says it's on there, so it must be on there. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Miller. So the new uh, uh, PIG 0 seven all UDFs have to use the new MapReduce API that I think uh, did not come out together. Yeah, that's correct. One thing I did not mention is uh, PIG is using the MapReduce uh, APIs, not the MapRed one. So um, we, we, in that conversion in your input formats or output formats, we're depending on them being MapReduce. Other questions, comments? Yes. SQL? Um, so we have posted the SQL patch. We have not committed it at this point. Um, that's all I'm going to say at the moment. <laughs> um, anything else?